Hello everyone, welcome to Cognition, an Erica Reed thriller, episode 2, The Wise Monkey. Yes, the title is even longer than the last game. I'm really excited to play this. It's only been one day since I finished the last episode, so everything's still fresh in my mind. I know everything that just happened. I'm into the story, and I've heard the second episode is even better than the first, so I'm excited. Let's get going. New case. Previously on Cognition. We've got to find the cane killer before he hurts Scott. Scotty died three years ago. Come on, Skippy. Davies will have our asses if we don't show up ten minutes ago. Reed, we're paying for the damn cell phone so that you take the call when I ring you. Is that clear? White male, cause of death, strangulation. They're getting worse. I told you to go see someone about that. I know when people need healing and how to help them heal. Cordelia? Someone I met today. She knows you. I stole a flower from her brother's grave. I need that package. It may provide clues to an ongoing investigation. Anthony Longmore was a killer. But if this piece of shit was murdered last night, then who killed him? We make a good team, don't we? It's Davies. She's a target. <laughs> Sully, John, the suspect is on the run. And, and I found Davies. Was that Sully? That looked like Sully. That really looked like Sully. McAdam sure got here fast. DC is only a two hour flight. Yes, it is. I know, but that doesn't mean I like it. It wasn't exactly solved cases in rainbows for me when he used to be our director. How are you holding up? What happened at the meeting house was. I don't want to talk about it, Sully. I'm about to go over it again with McAdams, and I just want to break for a few minutes. Yeah, okay. If you want to, though, well, you know. What do you want to talk about? Uh, how's your case going? What is... I don't even know what his case is. Let's find out. How's your case going? This thing's a piece of work. Sicko going out there and cutting out people's eyes, their ears, and their tongues. I'm calling her the wise monkey. Cute. Huh? Yeah, there was a partial fingerprint on one of these little charms, like from a bracelet, that were left at the crime scenes. Came back matching the prints from this missing girl. Plus, she used to take lessons from the latest victim, a retired opera singer. Pretty vicious stuff. Yeah, well, I'm trying not to let anything surprise me anymore. Thanks for your help earlier. A anytime. Hey, you need help, I'm your man. It was nothing. It wasn't nothing, Sully. I appreciated it. Like I said, we're a good team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not bad. How you been lately? We haven't talked much in a few weeks. Yeah, that'll happen when you don't return my calls. <sighs> Sorry about that. It's not that I don't like you, Sully. I do. It's just not something I can talk about. Yet. I get it, Erica. Everyone's got secrets and baggage and shit. I've got mine. Hell, we're FBI. It's practically part of the job requirements. <laughs> Not to mention one of the job risks. Why don't we grab a drink after we're done here? <laughs> Sully, it's 2 a.m. All the bars are closed. There's always beer in my fridge. What do you say? Toss back some Sam Adams and bitch about Sam McAdams? <laughs> it would be fitting. And I could use a beer after the day I've had. Hi. I heard y'all had some night owls in need of coffee up here. Yeah, thanks. Sounds good. 
Here you are, darling. Man, what is that French press How made about out you, of? Hun? Like silver? Or is that just glass that's frosted so you can't see through it? Either way, it looks damn expensive. Um Sure. Yeah. Coffee sounds good, thanks. Are you the new office assistant? That's me. Just started last week. My name's Tess. Let's see. Y'all must be Erica. <laughs> they must have told you about the hair, huh? Only redhead in the building. You're up, Red. I'll see you kids in the morning. After later today. God damn, it's late. Oof. Good luck, Erica. Thanks. Special Agent Reed. <laughs> what the hell is he wearing? It's late and I'm not interested in wasting time. How the hell is Davies dead and her killer not apprehended? I tried. I fired at the killer. The bastard just kept dodging. Dodging bullets? This isn't a comic book, Agent. I'm telling you what I saw, Director. I fired and the killer never got hit. If you have any doubts about my aim, just talk to the guys at the shooting range. Why did the killer choose the Old South meeting hall? Whoa. Dizzy. You look pale. I'm fine. Did he just come straight from a play and he didn't have time to change? Seriously, what in the hell is he wearing? He looks ridiculous. It's like a... it's practically a silver suit. It's got a little bit of blue, but it... it basically looks like silver. Is he trying to blend in with... with the walls? He's not doing a, ba a bad job of it, actually. Aside from the tie, that kind of ruins the whole thing. Um... Yeah, why did he choose it? Because of the judge, I guess? That, that certainly seems like a more intelligent answer than because it was empty, so let's go with that. It's the site where Samuel Sewell repented for his involvement in the Salem Witch Trials. The killer was drawing a parallel between him and Davies. She got an anonymous email mentioning him recently, too. That email was in Madison's inbox. What were you doing snooping around in here, Agent? Uh-oh. Uh... Um... Well, Davies seemed intent on covering up evidence, so I was doing my fucking job. Doing my job. And if I hadn't come in here and found that email, we probably wouldn't even know she was dead yet. You have no right to break into a superior's office. If you do it again while I'm here, don't count on me going lightly on you. Now, tell me what you know about this mess. Someone was in communication with Davies, telling her things about Antony Longmore, the hangman. She wrote it off as a kook, but when he showed up dead, she looked back into it. So first this person was helping her, then hunting her? He got angry when she didn't listen, but the threat was always there. If Davies had followed up on the leads, she would have seen that she was a target. What have you got to prove this? I can't focus. Um... Shit, I'm trying to remember. The picture and the facts. What was the picture? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, yeah, now I remember what the picture is. Um, the picture and the facts. Here. The facts pointed to the post office and a piece of the Le Pendu, and those scraps from a picture of Davies. So, if it wasn't Goodman getting revenge on Longmore, then who was it? I don't know yet, but I'm not gonna stop until I find out. You? I don't think so, Agent. You're not on this case. I thought you would say that. I thought you'd say that? Let me guess. I'm too close. Got it in one. I'm surprised to hear it from you, though. I expected you'd pitch another fit like you did with Kane. I'm glad to see you've learned better. That was... different. It was my brother, McAdams. I'm not as close on this case. Spare me. I've heard it before. 
The fact is, your performance ever since then has been sporadic at best. Sporadic? Don't get too upset. It happens to the best agents after a loss like that. But it's been three years, Erica, and your performance is all over the place. Some cases you're solving almost before the ink dries on the evidence reports. Others are getting drawn out far too long. You need to get your shit together. I can't risk this in the hands of someone who isn't consistent. Shit. The room's spinning. Man, this director is just as much of an asshole as Davies was. Is there something about the position of director that makes people assholes? Or maybe it doesn't make them assholes, but only assholes are elected? You know, only assholes rise up to be directors? He's such a dick. Um, I need to use the bathroom. Agent Reed, are you alright? I just... I need to use the bathroom. Get some water. wrong with me? What the hell? Sully? The Sully! Freeze! Oh. Bitch. Sully. Holy shit, I didn't... I, uh, I never even made the connection. He was just talking about the case. Some woman was cutting people's eyes and ears out and stuff. And there is a new person who is a woman. And I drank it. And there were drugs in it. <laughs> I, God, I... It's so obvious, I guess I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. That got started a lot faster than I thought it would. Well, we're off with a bang. Now I know a case I'm on. Reed. Reed. Erica, wake up, damn it. What? McAdams? Sully, where is he? Gone. I found you out here, along with a lot of blood and... that. I saw her do it. The secretary. That bitch drugged us. They're gone by now. But I need you working, if you can. I'm fine now. What do I need to do? Get out there and find Agent Sullivan. I'm calling everyone back in. I was going to joke and say, I wonder if whether I actually drink the coffee or not is going to have a big effect on the story, like maybe that decides my ending. I was going to joke about that, but now I'm thinking it actually might have changed things majorly if I wasn't drugged. Could I have saved him? Well, no, no, I mean, if I saved him then there wouldn't be anything to do this episode, right? But something else must have happened. Hmm. Anyway. Ugh. A blood smear. Well, I think it was a scalpel, so at least it was a clean cut. Ugh. He just dropped it. Sully's ear. She cut his fucking ear off. What the hell is this? A guitar charm? A silver jewelry charm. Shaped like a guitar. Is that from her? Did it fall off in the struggle? Let's see. Oh sweet, I still have my lockpick. Oh, whoops. That bitch left the silver guitar charm next to Sully's ear. Hmm, was that an accident? And she dropped it, or was that some sort of uh What do you call it? Like a calling card or something? You know, when a criminal leaves like their own uh, I don't know the word. Like their own mark upon the scene, like when people leave cards or something like that. Anyway. There's right, what the no hell just... time for that. Oh right, I'm supposed to be rescuing him. Rescuing him! Sully! Come back! Uh, which way did she go? To the elevator, right? 
I need to figure out which way they went first. Good point. Oh yeah, there's an emergency exit, isn't there? Oh, there we go. I need to figure out which way they went first. Well, obviously they went this way. There's blood. I need to figure. Yeah, I guess I have to show her it. There we go. A blood smear. Okay, I now let's go. Figure out which what? Way they there's a blood smear. Do I need to do this? Ugh. They must have gone down the fire exit stairs. I'm pretty sure the blood was enough evidence to figure that out, but okay. What the? My tires are freaking slashed! Damn it! Shit. Son of a. Ugh! Ugh! Having that same vision again. again. What is that? All right. Well, I certainly don't have time to repair my tires. Uh, whose car is this? It belongs to someone from the office, but I don't know who. What was that noise? What the hell? Is there someone in the trunk? In my trunk? Bitch slashed my tires. Yes, I already know that. Open it. It's probably locked. Or not. Wait, so that isn't the person. Where's the person then? Inside of the trunk of the other car? Okay, hold on. I'm not gonna change the tires. And she said she slashed her tires, not just one tire. So what would one do? Would I need four? Uh, there's no trunk. Sounds like it's coming from the trunk. Open it up, hello. Hello? Is someone in there? What the hell? Hang on, I'll get you out. This is not... I assume it's locked, so I probably need to use my lockpick. There it is. This is not going to work with this. Or not. Um... How do I use? Use my guitar charm. This is not. Okay, hold on. Maybe a crowbar, or whatever the hell was in here. No use. No, no, not what I wanted to do. Can you open it? No use. All right, what am I missing? You know, I had this problem at the beginning of the last episode, and I'm having it again here. I get stuck right in the beginning. And I feel like an idiot when I finally figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do. Alright, there's no cognition. That won't work. Uh, do I need to shoot it? Wouldn't that be a bit dangerous? This is not going to work with this. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um. I don't I don't know. Why can't I get it get the person out? Sounds like it's coming from the trunk. Nothing I have seems to work. This is not... Show the trunk your badge? FBI, open this your trunk immediately! This is not going to work with this. Hmm, apparently the trunk is not sentient. Okay. Can I get inside of my car? Is there something inside of the car? No use. I'm not getting... I need to find some... 
You gotta be kidding me. I'm stuck in one environment with like three things to click on and like five inventory items and I can't figure out what to do. Are you kidding me? There's no cognition. This is just... This is ridiculous on my part. Like, I can't believe I'm getting stuck on the beginning. I'm stuck on the fucking beginning. <sighs> I can't open the trunk, right? She won't open it? Oh wait, no, she she will? I must have accidentally clicked on the car before. Okay, well then grab the tire iron. And use that to pry the trunk open. Alright, yeah, I just clicked on the wrong thing. I was trying to open the car, but I meant to open the trunk. Okay, now we're in business. Use that on that. There we go. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> Got it. Tess? You're not... Hang Wait, what? On. I'll get you out of there. She's not the one that did it? Then who, who the hell was that? Tess, how are you feeling? Jumpy as a frog. W what happened? <laughs> We're trying to find out. Unless... Maybe... Maybe she's trying something very dangerous? Maybe she took him, stashed him somewhere, and then planted herself in the trunk? Is that possible? Where could he ha where could she have put him? You have to be somewhere very close. That seems pretty far-fetched. I don't think so. Her last name is Stamper? The hell kind of a last name is that? Tess Stamper. She looks ready to bolt. I hope she's not drinking coffee. Because it might be poisoned. I would stay away from coffee for maybe a couple weeks. Can I get you anything? Just get this over with so I can go home, please. Tess, the woman who did this is a suspect in a serial killer case. Don't worry, you aren't the target. You were just a way to get in the building. But she's taken another agent hostage, and we need to know everything so we can find him. Lord, Mama said this job was a bad idea. I should have listened. I'll help, but I don't know what I can tell you. Tell me what you remember. I got off work and I came out here. I was stepping over to my car and someone asked if if I had dropped something. I started to turn around and then and, and then she blew this powder in my face and Oh, oh, I don't know. I can't remember past that. You're all right, Tess. You're safe now. Did she have a southern accent, too? No, she sounded like she was from around here. Okay, so a local. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was Erica Reed. Yes, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. What did she look like? She had blonde hair and a long coat, I think. I didn't see her face. I'm sorry. Any other details? What kind of build? How tall? Oh, um, gosh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe your height? Sort of average build? All right, that's mildly helpful. Can you give me a minute, Tess? I need to review some facts. All right, but not too long. I'm sorry, I just really want to get home. Of course. What's the purple stuff again? I forgot, what is that? Tess, thanks for staying for this. I know it'll be tough, but I need for you to think about what happened and remember as many details as possible. I, I'll try, Agent. Okay, so the purple's the regression? Yeah, okay. What 
did that woman put in her pocket? Hmm. I don't suppose it was some sort of a charm like this? Tess, would you check your pockets for me? M my pockets? Um, all right. It's not mine, I swear. How, how did you know? Call it a hunch. And don't worry, I know it's not yours. Thanks for staying to talk to me, Tess. I'm sorry I wasn't more help. Everything helps narrow it down. Get yourself checked out at the hospital. Someone will give you a ride there. And if you do think of anything, give me a call. I will. Oh, I'm sorry. I never got your name. Erica Reed. Someone was looking for you. Her name was Cordelia? You weren't in when she came by and everything was all crazy with what happened to Director Davies? I took down her number and left it with Gwen when I got off my ship. Thanks. I'll get it from her. I don't think this job is for me after all. This is all just too much, but good luck with your case. Take care, Tess. Looks like McAdams is calling everyone back in. I should go check in with him. Alright, so what was that item? It looked like another charm. Yeah, theater mask's charm, and then there was a guitar charm on the ground. <laughs> Next to the bloody ear, which appears to still be on the ground. Ew, somebody clean that up. Collect it, it's evidence. Actually, I wonder... I wonder how long it could still be reattached. I mean, it was a clean cut, with a scalpel. So if you put that thing on ice, it might even still be able to be reattached to him. But not if it's been left on the ground for an hour. This theater mask's charm is new. It was left in Tess's pocket. Hey Gwen, I have a present for you. Those two don't work together. Never mind. It was a bad idea. Just trying to be nice. Sup, Silver Dude? Or teal, whatever color that is. He really does look like he's trying to blend in with his surroundings. It's like the exact color of the wall. McAdams? Agent Reed? It wasn't Tess. She was drugged and locked up in her car before anything happened up here. Shit. Does she remember anything about the person who came at her? Nothing too useful. Sir, given what was done to Sully in the case he was working on, I really believe that- The wise monkey. I thought of that too. I've told IT to get you access to his computer. Get on his computer and find whatever info on this you can. Abduction isn't part of the M.O. She's gotten bolder. Something must have changed for her. Find out what? Wise Monkey is your case now, Agent Reed. Find Agent Sullivan as soon as possible. I'll get back to it. See that you do. Okay, well, the Wise Monkey killer went straight for Sully. And apparently that's not something she normally does. So I'm guessing he was getting close to her. And maybe he was about to catch her. She noticed that. Saw that um, he was going to be a danger to her. So she came in to deal with it, maybe? That's my operating theory right now. Or hypothesis, I should say. Alright, so let's review... God, the blood is still there! Clean that up! Jesus! Somebody? Anybody? Please? Gwen? Gwen, could you, could you clean that up? Is the ear still there on the ground? What's wrong? You look out of sorts. I don't know what I'm going to do! We've got missing evidence. I think it was that woman who took Sully. What does she steal? Evidence from the Wise Monkey case. We had four charms from the crime scene, but three of them are gone now. And I've got these forms to take to McAdams, and oh shoot! Just breathe. What is that note? I wrote down the first six numbers of it. 
but I didn't get the last one, so when I see it again, I'm gonna write down the rest of it. It's some sort of a phone number. Oh, oh, it's to call Cordelia, okay. Tess told me she took down a phone number for me and gave it to you? Right, I forgot all about it. Here you go. I thought maybe it's like an Easter egg or something, so I was writing it down, thinking maybe I could call it in-game or something, and find an Easter egg. Turns out it was all pretty mundane. I need the charms that are in evidence for the Wise Monkey case. Thanks to that thief, I've only got one. Fill out the form and it's all yours. I hope it helps you catch that awful woman. Was this guitar charm one of the ones in evidence? No, none of them were guitar shaped. This one's new. Interesting. Thank you, Gwen. Anytime. Well, the wise monkey killer is very charming. Seriously, why did she like charms so much? She left one right here, and then she left one in the pocket of Tess, right outside. What is it with these charms? If she keeps using them so liberally, she's gonna run out. Oh god, it's still there! For fuck's sake, someone! Anyone? Am I really gonna just sit down at his computer and look through his files while his bloody ear is just sitting on the ground? That's disgusting. Alright, I need an evidence request form for the other charm. Let's go on his desk. This place is a mess. At least the file I need is on top. I, I would actually say that's a pretty damn clean desk. You're gonna tell this crazy story to them over some beers at the next family reunion. Promise. I hope so. All the trademarks of a Southie boy. The Pats, the Sox, the Celtics, and a big, huge Irish family. He's got three brothers and five nieces and nephews. God only knows how many cousins. Sully's stress ball always looks like it's laughing at me. <laughs> Sully's hard copy of the Wise Monkey case files. All right, let's get the guitar, or uh, not a guitar charm, the, uh, the other charm before I look at the case file. Okay, how do I do that? Um, I guess I should <laughs> check his email first. Mm, which one's the newest one and which one's the oldest? Normally, the bottom would be the oldest. Hey, bro. Any ideas for Mom's birthday next week? As usual, no list. Think she'd like one of those ebook things? I'll make dinner reservations at the factory. You bring in Erica? Brandon. I just gotta make sure he's going. Southie Townie, boys. Don't forget our game against the Somerville Ballers is this Saturday at 2, and they've got their ringer, the infamous Miles Goodhue, in the lineup. Warm up and stretch those kicking legs, boys. Boston office agents and employees. As you know from Director Rahal's email, I am filling in as the acting director in the wake of Madison Davies' death. I will be arriving in Boston in a few hours. Like you, I considered Madison a personal friend, and I have every intention of bringing her killer to justice. You can best aid in this endeavor by continuing your current assignments with your full attention. And if you are pulled onto other cases or assignments, give those your full attention as directed. As details of the funeral arrangements for Madison are made by her family, they will be communicated to you. Samuel McAdams. Whoa, this one's from the director of the FBI. It is with great regret that I must inform the Bureau of the passing of Madison Davies, the director of the Boston Field Office. She was killed in the line of duty during her most recent case in Boston. Madison served with the FBI for 22 years, an excellent agent whose history of work speaks for itself. She was a sharp-minded woman with an unerring dedication to her job, an example to us all, and she will be greatly missed. Effective immediately, Samuel McAdams will be the acting director of the Boston Field Office until further notice. Sincerely, Brandon Rahal, 
FBI director. Sorry, busy this weekend. <laughs> oh, getting shut down You're again. A real bitch sometimes. Oh, Sully. It just wasn't meant to be. I have uncontrolled psychic powers that complicate relationships. The case database. I can access closed and current cases here. Okay, I think this is where I'll get the evidence form. The wise monkey killer is fixated on the removal of the eyes, ears, and or tongues of her victims. Each victim has been pushed from a height, stabbed in the abdomen, and then had one or more of these sense organs removed. The cause of death has either been from the head trauma of the fall or bleeding out from the stab wounds. Removal of the organs has always been post-mortem. Kelsey was gaining confidence as she continued to kill. Looks like Sully thought they might all be connected to her and the deaths were part of some personal vendetta. Makes sense. Revenge killings are fairly common for female serial killers. Her method's particularly gruesome, though. Question is, why Sully? We've only had this case for a few weeks. How'd she even know he was on it, much less have time to plan this? Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere in his investigations. He came across her. He became aware of her and she became aware of him. That's what I'm thinking. Alright, so it looks like the first killings... It seemed like she had a shaking hand when she was doing the first killings, but later ones are steadier and done more quickly. So, yep, gaining confidence. Alright, so the suspect is a... Uh, was a former student of the most recent victim. Heather Ann and a former Berkeley student. No known connections to the other victims yet. Okay, chef's knife. So is that her weapon? In all the cases, or just in one case? I don't know, it just says chef's knife. Okay. Luke Jensen. First murder, eyes removed, Berkeley graduate, cut show, inexperience and uncertainty, messy, uneven. Violin charm, okay. Wait, vi... Hold on. Violin charm. So all of these charms seem to be related to music? Or... Like... Arts? Violin charm, a musical instrument. Bell charm, that's... Makes sound related to music. Um, G clef charm, it's related to music. Let's see, what is this one? Piano charm, related to music. I have the guitar charm, related to music. Um, and then there's the... What's the other one called? The... I don't know, it's the two faces. Which is not really related to music, but related to arts. Hmm. Alright, so the victims are both male and female. The first two ones were male. Third one was female. Fourth one was also female. Tilden her home. Singing teacher. Kelsey is a former student. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Suspect is female. Why kill the male stronger victims first? Yeah, her first two victims were male. And then her last two victims were female. And she was... Her cuts were imprecise and shaky to begin with, so she was scared. So if she was scared, why would she choose such hard victims? What is, six, what is the significance of the charms? Removed organs significant to each victim? Or taking more due to growing confidence? Hold on, let's see. Um... Well, Heather was a singing teacher, but it doesn't say what organs were removed, so I'm not sure if that's connected. Let's see. What was this person? This person was a student. Eyes and tongue removed. I don't know what she was studying. Um, don't know what he did, doesn't say. Berkeley graduate also doesn't say what he did. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have enough info. 
All right, let's do a form request. One evidence form coming up. And let's get that charm. Yeah, it's very strange that her first two victims would be male, when she was still scared and uncertain of what she was doing. Let's see what this gets me. You know, Erica, you're just walking ten feet with it. You really didn't have to fold it up and shove it in your shirt. But whatever you want to do, it's your shirt. Now it's all sweaty. Here you go, Gwen. Folded up sweaty Here's letter that was in my shirt. Okay. Hang tight for a minute. Who knows, someone probably has a fetish for that, right? Folded up sweaty letters? Hope that helps. It will. Thank you. Alright, the bell charm. Who had the bell? Alright, who had the bell? Violin bell. Okay, so it was Nick Stewart that had the bell charm. He was the second victim and he had his ears removed. Hmm. Alright, so I don't think there's any need to go back to the old ones, right? No, probably not. I don't have any evidence to look at right now. Mm, don't have any evidence. Um, can we look up these people's names? Not the victims, but let's look up Kelsey Gardner. Kelsey Gardner, age 21. Born and raised in White Rock, New Mexico. Moved to Boston to attend Berkeley College of Music, majoring in performance and composition. Dropped out in the middle of her junior year. Last known address is in Dorchester. Reported missing by her parents last June after a few weeks of not hearing from her. Last seen entering her apartment by neighbors two weeks prior on May 30th. Worked at a nearby coffee shop. Didn't report for any shifts after May 30th. She was suffering from financial issues at the time. Circumstantial evidence suggests she may have run away. Everyone on this list was musically inclined in some way. I need to find out more about Kelsey to figure out where she might have taken Sully. The Dean of Students at Berkeley is a good place to start, and her landlord can probably let me into her old apartment. Alright, time to do some investigation. Let's get out there in the field. Wait a minute. Wait, did I? I never even took a look at the paper. Did I? Is this file on the desk the same as the one on the computer? Let's see what you got. Oh no, this is not the same thing. Yeah, what's the first one? Uh, oh, these are the different victims. Oh. Fuck, that's horrible. Ugh. Okay, that's Colleen. Okay. I guess all I get to do is stare at the beautiful picture. It's the next one. Ugh. Ugh, looks like he died from the fall. Oh, wait a minute, this this text actually has more information than the file had. Hold on, let me go back. 
It's almost impossible to read, it's really blurry, but... Colleen Lavery, sophomore year student at Berkeley College of Music. Victim was killed on the stage of... Oh, she's killed on the stage of the World Players Theater. Estimated time of death is 11.45 p.m. Okay, so it's late at night. The victim was found the following morning at 7.35 a.m. by the theater staff. The victim went to the theater alone, presum presumably to rehearse, and was probably followed inside. She was pushed from behind off of a set where she made impact on the stage floor. Crime scene shows that the victim was able to stand after the initial fall and attempted to flee while fighting off her attacker. Defensive wounds, matched stab wounds, and lower abdomen for, for a six-inch chef's knife. Okay, so she was pushed, got injured from that, but was able to get up, and then she struggled but was killed by the six-inch chef's knife. And then after she was dead, the eyes and the tongue were removed and taken from the scene. Oh, wasn't that in one of the videos I saw? Early on, like a bunch of organs in jars, so I guess she's keeping them. Hmm. Similarities to the Jensen and Stewart murder suggest the same killer. Okay, yeah, so part of the wise monkey case. Okay, let's look at the next one. Victim was found at 12.03 a.m. Alright, so that's also very close to midnight. Another very late night kill. Or actually, actually, no, that's when the victim was found, not when he was killed. Uh, so he's found at about midnight by a neighbor on the fire escape of their building. Hmm. The victim had been pushed down the fire escape stairs, causing a fracture of the occipital bone and severe cranial bleeding. Ugh. The victim was then stabbed in the abdomen with a six-inch chef's knife. The cause of death is blood loss from these two injuries. All right, so another fall and stab. And then the victim's eyes were removed post-mortem. Not found at the scene, so they were also taken. They were presumed to have been taken from the scene by the killer. The cuts on the face indicate an inexperienced hand. A small silver violin shaped charm was found in the scene during a second sweep for evidence in the alley below the fire escape. He was a recent graduate of the Berkeley College of Music. He's currently self employed as a music tutor. Okay. So he was a music tutor, presumably teaching violin, at least, among maybe other things. And there was a violin-shaped charm found at the scene. And this one was a G-clef, and she was practicing, presumably, her singing, or something like that. Alright, let's look at this one. Oops. Nick Stewart, professional alias DJ Abhorrence. <laughs> nice name. Abhorrence. Victim was found at 11.34 p.m., also around midnight by a member of the waste staff at the club Jaunty, uh, Jaunty Abbas, on Lansdowne Street, I think it says, in the alley behind the building. Stewart was working as a DJ on the night of the murder and exited the building during a break. Forensics showed that the victim was pushed off of the back staircase into the pavement. Death occurred from the blow in the back of the skull. Post-mortem injuries include stab in the abdomen with a six-inch chef's knife and removal of the ears. Ears not found at the scene. Small silver charm shaped like a bell was found on the victim's body. I'm not sure how the bell is directly related, but it is a musical sort of thing, and he was a DJ, so it's kind of related. It's interesting, though. She stabbed him, even though he was already dead from the fall. Was that just to make sure he was dead? Or what? Or does she just have some sort of a weird obsession with stabbing people with a chef's knife, even if they don't need to be stabbed? All right, ugh. Heather Ann, victim was a retired opera singer and prior to her death was working as a music tutor. She was found in her home at, there's the address, by student at 9 a.m. Upon arriving for a scheduled lesson, time of death is estimated at 10.30 p.m. the previous night. So, okay, another murder also around midnight. So it sounds like she kills people around midnight. Maybe just because it's dark? That's when most people are kind of, you know, alone. And you're less likely to be seen. The house shows no signs of forced entry. The victim, who lived alone, fell or pushed backwards down the interior stairs, sustaining blunt force trauma in many areas as well as a fractured rib and multiple fractures in her hands and fingers. She struck her head at the bottom of the stairs. The victim was then stabbed in the upper abdominal area with a six-inch knife. The cause of death is attributed to the stabbing. Eyes, ears, and tongue were removed post-mortem and knocked out of the scene. 
A piano charm. Silver was found near the body. Alright, so she's also a musical teacher, presumably at least teaching piano, and maybe other instruments. And... There was a, uh... A piano charm. So the charms are very much connected to what the victims did. Weird. So did Kelsey just have like a really, really bad experience with a music teacher once? And now she wants to kill all music teachers? It's like, fuck music teachers, he was... My last one was mean to me. No, I think it's probably deeper than that. I need to do some more research first. Do I? Don't I need to go to her apartment and... Also the, what, the Berkeley College of Music or whatever it's called? Hold on, do I need to do a search? Um, I'm not sure what this is going to get me. I don't think this is going to get me anything. No. Um, I don't think now is the best time to call Cordelia, although I could try. Uh, I don't even think I can. Nope. Let me go talk to John real quick. McCoy? Red? What do you know about the Wise Monkey case? Sully was working it and now he's part of it? <laughs> yeah, and I'd like to fix that, so a little help here? Same as you, Red. I know it's on the file. If you're looking for where to start, check out his desk. He's probably got some notes that maybe didn't get on the database yet. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. I already read it. Here's the prime suspect for Wise Monkey. A 21-year-old college dropout named Kelsey Gardner. It looks like the murders have been about revenge. Think she might have found out he was on her case? She must have, but who knows how. He's been on it for barely a week. Tough part's gonna be finding her. I've got an old address, but she hasn't been seen in almost five months. Maybe someone she knew back at school will know where to find her. Are you still on Davy's case? McAdams took me off it. Yeah, I'll let you know if we learn anything new, Erica. You found her. That's more than anyone else here could manage. Didn't stop her from being killed. I'm gonna do everything I can to find Sully. But I feel responsible for what happened to Davies. You didn't kill her, Erica. It's not your fault. Ugh, I know. I just wish I could nail the asshole who did. So, McAdams hasn't changed a bit. How long do you think he'll stay? Probably just until Davies' murder is solved. He's better suited to DC. Well, considering how fast he got out of here after Scott died, I think he agrees. So why fill in up here? The top brass says go, you don't ask questions. All right, you do, but McAdams doesn't, even if he doesn't like the assignment. Besides, he knew Davies for years. He wants to bring in her killer. You almost make him sound like a half-decent guy. He doesn't have your spirit, Skippy, but that doesn't make him a bad person. Try not to piss him off too much, huh? <laughs> no promises. Oh, I'm going to piss him off as much as I can, because I hate him. I'm going to go back to my work. Go get him, Red. Agent Vargo's desk. Do I... Know you? Special Agent Marjorie Vargo sits there. Marjorie's out having baby Kevin. Wait, so that's the empty desk? There's a description for the empty desk, but not a description for the person right there? What? That's Agent Stephen Abbott's desk. Steve's on vacation right now. So I can get two descriptions of people who aren't here, but I can't get descriptions of the people that are? That's, that's a weird choice. Hmm.
Okay, what am I missing? Do I need to print something out? Do I need to make a connection? I don't have any evidence to look at right now. I don't have any e Whoops. Oh, I've already done that. Do I need to print anything from here, though? Download? I don't need to request any evidence- Nah. No, this is useless. What am I doing? Yeah, don't I already know where to go? I need to go to her apartment and to the Berkeley whatever college to talk to the people who knew her. Right? Is there anything else to do? Alright, well that's the only tip and that's what I've already done. I've already checked his notes. This is where Tess sat. I need to do some more research first. I really don't think I do, Erica. I'm pretty sure I have all I need. So I need to go on my own desk? Check my email? Why not? I don't have any business with other... Hey, sweetheart. I heard about what's going on over there. I'm so sorry about Davies and Sully, Erica. Are you alright? I've been calling but only getting your voicemail. Just let me know you're okay. Love, Dad. I'm okay, Dad, but really busy. I'll call later. Love, Erica. Boston Office Agents and Employees. As you know from Director Rahal's email, I am filling in as the acting Oh, I've already read this. Like you, as details... Okay, that one, yep, already read that one. Figures. Dad avoids visiting Scott. Maybe that's why he decided to bury him there. So that he could I be read that last episode, actually. And I think these are all the old ones, right? Cool. I yeah. Yeah, these are just old emails. There's no point in doing that from my computer. It's not gonna be any different. Um... I don't know, what am I missing? I mean, I have her address right there, why... Why don't I just go there? to do more research first. Like what? I've already thoroughly looked at his files. In fact, I don't even think I can pick them up again. No, I can't. You're gonna tell this crazy... Cordelia's phone number. 
Should I call Cordelia? Would that help anything? written it down wrong. Maybe I can use my powers to find the right one. There's something there, but I can't get a fix on it. Did she really fuck up writing down her own number? Come on. Mm, how would I use my powers? Go back over here to when she gave it? Or... No? Mmm... I don't know, but surely that's not what I'm supposed to be doing right now, right? I mean, that's not research. I wonder if there's any chance Cordelia is the killer. She did say she often hangs around cemeteries, which is pretty creepy. I would say that's suspicious. Hmm. I don't know, let me save the game. I don't know what to do. Um. Oh, I have the file on me. Sully's hard copy of the Wise Monkey case files. Okay, can I do something with it? No, there we go. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I can read that stuff, but I can't actually click on anything within it, so... It's not really going to do me any good, and I've already read everything. Unless, wait a minute, can I get her to read it? By doing this? The third victim was Colleen Oh, Lavery, I can! A sophomore year Berkeley student. Okay, well, let me skip it, because I've already read it. First victim, Luke Jen. I'm guessing this is what I needed to do. Second victim. Yeah, this is probably it. Fourth and most... I've done everything I can from here. Time to hit the street. That's what was stopping my progress. Okay. Now let's go. Oh yeah, I got that groovy map music again. Let's go to the Berkeley College, I guess. It's either that or the morgue. Why can't I go to the morgue? There's no one dead, right? We don't have any bodies. I guess it'd just be to see Terrence. Special Agent Reed. I am. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me, Dean Chapman. Of course. Now, how can I help you? I need some information on a former student. Kelsey Gardner? Kelsey Gardner. Oh, yes, the missing girl. Has she been found? Not exactly. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, what can I do to help, Agent? Well, before I reply to your question, I'm going to very awkwardly turn away from you and examine the entire room. So just hold tight and stare at the back of my head. Ugh, that thing's a mess. Paper sticking out, overstuffed drawers. It's like the university equivalent of shoving things under your bed. <laughs> the drawers are labeled personnel, finances, coursework, and miscellaneous. I'd be more surprised if he didn't have a few of these in his office. Wow. 
Is that cello signed by Yo-Yo Ma? Damn. And a guitar signed by the Beatles? That had to set him back a lot. Holy crap. I can play a little piano, but I'd be embarrassing myself playing in front of him. Plus, I don't think he would appreciate it if I just suddenly picked up his cello. That's probably worth like $100,000 or something. I don't think it's meant as a practical instrument at this point. I think it's just a museum piece. Office of the Dean of Students, Berkeley College of Music. Official looking stuff. <laughs> Is that foreshadowing me needing to steal that and using that to forge an official letter? I think so. Hmm, would you mind if I just took one? Or do I have to distract him? May I take a copy of this? Well, do you need it for something? Um... No. Not really. Uh, then I'd rather you didn't. Awkward. This is off to a bad start. All four Beatles signed this. Impressive. Isn't that one of those really swanky hotels in Dubai? Well, he is the Dean. He probably makes a lot of money. Okay, I think that's everything. Uh, yep. Okay. Dean Chapman. Hello, Agent Reed. Tell me about yourself. Well, I've been the Dean of Students at Berkeley for the last five years. Uh, before that, I was a professor here. I taught in the strings department, as well as some composition courses. How much interaction do you get with the students now? Well, I make the effort to meet all of them at the very least. I still teach one course a semester as well, and of course a few students do their work study in the offices here. What can you tell me about Kelsey? Uh, not much, I'm afraid. I try to get to know every student, but with so many of them, it's hard to know some more than passingly. Uh, she was brought to my attention while the police investigated her disappearance. Asking why she dropped out? Yes, uh, financial problems, a real shame. She lost her merit scholarship after two years. Her grades dropped, and uh, then she dropped out during her junior year. Well, that sucks. Why not try to get a student loan? Sure, I think she uh, tried, but she wasn't able to get one. Then what happened to her? Uh, I'm not sure, old friend. Why did she have so much trouble getting a loan? Well, you'd have to uh, talk to a creditor for those details, but uh, it's always an unfortunate situation. Mm, college doesn't come cheap. No, it doesn't, but the college has costs to cover as well. No magic wand to wave, as it were. What about her family? They couldn't pay? Well, I don't know what her family's situation was. What classes did Kelsey take? Uh, most of her classes were in performance and composition, specifically singing. Did she ever take any classes with you? Uh, oh yeah, she took one of my composition classes. So you must have known her from that. Those classes are rather large, you must understand. Uh, now that I think about it, I do remember her being in my class, though she wasn't the most involved student. Did Kelsey have any friends I could talk to? Uh, I don't know what her social circle was, but I could put you in touch with her old roommate. I'd appreciate that. Uh, Homelin, uh, could you please contact the former roommate of Kelsey Gardner? Uh, Agent Reed would like to speak with her. Certainly, sir. I'll have her information ready for when Agent Reed is done. Excellent. I'd also like to ask you about two other Berkeley students. They were recent murder victims. Oh, yes, of course. Has progress been made in either of their cases? We believe they were the victims of the same killer. Actually, I'm pursuing the possibility that Kelsey Gardner killed them both. I need to know if there was any connection beyond them all going to school here. Y you, you really think she might have killed them? Kelsey? My God, I would have never thought. You said you didn't know her very well. I, well, uh, no, but uh, I'd be shocked to hear that about any of our students. I'll help you however I can. 
Luke Jensen was a recent graduate. Do you know if he and Kelsey had any classes together, or if they were friends? Well, I'll check our student records. No classes together. They didn't live in any of the same dorms. Oh, here we are. It looks like Kelsey was tutored by Luke in her freshman year in composition. Were those one-on-one -on -one sessions? Uh, probably. Small group sessions at most. How did she do in the class? Uh, she got a B that semester, but in later composition courses, her grades fell. Her last grade in that subject was a D. Mm, sounds like the lessons didn't stick. Colleen Lavery was still a student here. What can you tell me about her? A bright young woman, very talented singer. Her death was truly tragic, and what was done to her was just awful. Any connection between her and Kelsey? Uh, no classes together. Uh, hmm. uh, the merit scholarship that Kelsey lost was awarded to Colleen the next year. Would Kelsey have known this? Well, it's possible some scholarships announce whom they've been awarded to. Those are all the questions I have for now. Can you think of anything else I should know about Kelsey or either of the victims? Uh, no, that's all I can think of. If you think of anything, contact me. Thank you for your time, Dean Chapman. Yes, of course. Uh, good luck, Agent Reed. Hmm. Well, revenge... or maybe more like envy killings... do fit the information he just gave me. Because they were all students here. At Berkeley. And it sounds like she would have reason to kill them for... Like, maybe she was super jealous? At people getting what she thought she deserved? Like, maybe she wanted to be better than she actually was? But she wasn't that good? And she killed people that were that good? Like, she killed someone who tutored her, so maybe that tutor was better than her. And that pissed her off, that frustrated her. And this other person was awarded the scholarship that she lost. And she thought she deserved it, so she killed him or her. I don't remember whether it was him or her. So maybe she's trying to take away... ...the things that they were skilled at. Because it frustrates her, it pisses her off. You know, someone's a better singer than her, so she kills them and cuts out their tongue. That's what I'm thinking right now. Given what I just heard, that's my that's my working hypothesis. Hmm. Is there some way I could distract him to get one of these? Nah. I'll come back if I need them. 